What's up everybody? I'm Anthony Michaels from Tucson, Arizona, and we're going to talk about some of my work, a little bit about my career, what it's been like, how I got here, and all that fun stuff. Tattooing has been a has been a journey. For me, the idea came about in seventh grade, but even before that, you know, growing up as a child, I struggled with speech quite a bit, articulating um, and just, just even speaking. And art seemed to calm me. It allowed me to interact and engage uh, even with family. So as the people around me noticed that, they learned to put me in that creative space to get me to kind of connect. You know, I started tattooing at 26. Honestly, I was just paying the bills in between basketball seasons, playing semi-professionally in Mexico. To have this idea, right, that I'm gonna be <laughs> this world-renowned tattoo artist, like, get the f out of here, right? Come on, man, what the, like, what are you, what are you doing? You, you're making a good amount of money right now. You're playing basketball, not in the NBA, but you're getting paid to play basketball, like you're good. Do not throw this away. And I was like, I'm gonna throw it away. I'm gonna take a chance. That belief, right, or that little intuitive nudge, like that mid-20 confidence, whatever it was, maybe it was defiance, maybe, I, I don't know, I honestly don't know what it was. I do know that I was terrified. Um, and I did it, and, and, and here we are. I don't even think I've done five portraits at this time. At the time I posted this, I, I was, it was one of those moments where you do some shit like, how the f did I lift that car up? Well, because your child was under it, right? <laughs> this tattoo came out this way because I was not allowed to fuck up. This girl's grandmother was very special to her. It almost forced me to literally take it step by step. So my girlfriend at the time was pressing me to start an Instagram. Like an Instagram for what? Like I'm not, I'm not showing up to get criticized. I can criticize myself like a professional just fine. I don't need other people <laughs> affirming my horrible thoughts about myself, right? At the time, honestly guys, I didn't even believe in myself, right? But people who were business minded and who saw something, it was just like, you know what? Okay, let me do it. And the response was great. Yeah, damn. Oh, you, you guys are good. This tattoo was uh, this tattoo was a gut check. I'm going up against Clean and Christian, amazing tattooers, efficient tattooers. I'm not as efficient as they are. They were exponentially faster than me at the time, and so this tattoo was terrifying. I don't know if this was aired on the finale episode or the episode going into the finale. I f***ing raised my hand and asked Oliver, hey, I am I am nowhere near as fast as Christian and Clean. And he stopped me right there. He said, I want 24 hours of tattooing, period. And that's what I did. That's what I gave within my means, right? And I interpreted it with my language. And, and this is what we came up with. The judges wanted to challenge me in Japanese traditional. So I had to do my homework. A lot of stressful nights um, studying the craft. It's not finished. Right. According to Dave Navarro, from my studies, there was no white applied on traditional Japanese tattoos. The hair, the beard, the spine, very intentional. I didn't have time on stage to explain that. I was f***ing nervous. I could have spent more time on it. Like, absolutely, right? And so I, I respected his stance. And it is a competition, right? So his perspective, is it's not finished. Um, if you guys followed up with season seven, there was another episode about this tattoo where <laughs> two traditional artists praised this tattoo. This thing pushed me, it changed me, and I'm, I'm so grateful. And Japanese tattooing is one of my favorite styles to do today. This tattoo is on a very special, strong woman who is a cancer survivor. And that's really all she brought to the table. She said, I want something representing this journey. I made it through and she gave me creative freedom. I'm not great at advocating for myself. So learning to tattoo, you provide a service. You do anything that walks in the door. So I'm able to do all styles. And I hit burnout eventually, you know, and I found myself getting away from the intention of tattooing 
right? I was like, damn, I can do a lot of different shit. That means I can make more money because I can attend to more people. And to see my depletion in my mental health, my emotional state, my physical state, that rock bottom, and it hurt when I landed. I'm very grateful that I was able to pull out of it and I'm, I'm still here. And I now have the power to say no. And I've learned to not metaphorically like kill myself, right, about saying no, because now my, my energy is still there and it allows me to carry that into tattoos like this. And it allows me to not be depleted because I served a purpose that was still in alignment with me, right? I, I'm no longer selling myself for the bag. Putting down the table first, that I require creative freedom with your concept and your, you know, the direction you want to go in, that's allowed me to give the quality that people are looking for. This painting came to me, it was given to me and shown to me intuitively compared to a client bringing something to me that has a direction and purpose. Art and painting is no holds barred, right? There's no expectations. I, I get to express how I feel. A little trickier when you're tailoring something to fit somebody forever. You know what I mean? So with the art show, wasn't my idea. I trusted the process and I let go. I am known to hold paintings and hold things, hold feelings, emotions, thoughts, information, and I'll take that to the fucking grave with me and nobody will see it. Until further notice, I have people helping me with that because if not, you guys aren't gonna see anything and you're not gonna fucking get anything. So I don't know why it turned out into an eight foot piece, but very, very, very special, very special piece. And that was like the one everyone had to get their hands on at the art show. Five minutes after posting that, um, it was sold. So yeah, there was a lot of upset people at the art show. You know, I, again, I was overthinking this, this interview. I was fine until I started walking in here and then I started like, right, trying to control, trying to over anticipate. What's it gonna be like? What kind of questions are gonna ask me? I hope they don't have me do no stupid, silly punchlines or try to be funny. I'm grateful that I was able to share some information, kind of give people a different perspective maybe on uh, who I am and why I do what I do. And I, I wanna do more and I, I can't do anything that I am doing now without the support of everybody watching, everybody here at Inked. I couldn't be more grateful. So I sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate all of you guys here at Inked. I appreciate everybody that supports and follows me, my business, all of you that accept me, all of you wearing my tattoos. Like, you guys are like my celebrities in a sense, you know what I mean? So, thank you.